new videos every day. Joseph Strickland here, uh, an applied clinical nutritionist here in Austin. Uh, thanks again for all the comments on the videos. I, I really like those comments. Keep them coming. Feel free to send me any emails if you have any questions. I'm basically here to serve you. So uh, today I'm going to talk about the crap they put in food. That's right, food additives. I told you a few weeks ago I'd be talking about it, and today I'm going to be talking about it. So a lot of people ask me what food additives are. They're actually things that are put into food to help them sustain shelf life, uh, make it safe to eat, um, or quote, safe to eat, uh, and also to help uh, increase the shelf life so that uh, the food won't go rotten. Of course, if you're running a grocery store uh, and the oranges go bad, you lose money. Uh, so there's got to be uh, substances and packages, that way um, they have food to sell you. So the thing about food additives is they're not food. Uh, and that escapes a lot of people. They think, oh, I'm eating this, this food substance. And what they don't realize is that, yes, it does have some food in it, um, but when you start having more food additives than food, uh, there's a problem. And uh, it's an unnatural substance added to the food to change its properties. So, uh, in looking at a food, you want to find out if it is you know, how much of it is food and how much of it is uh, put in there just to make it uh, palatable or edible. So a lot of times people ask me, if food additives are so bad, why are they allowed? Well, they're allowed for several reasons. One, they make the food taste better. They're used as flavor enhancers. Um, an example of that would be Coca-Cola. It tastes good. It's got high fructose corn syrup in there and it's actually designed to taste good. And it does. Uh, there's a difference between eating for the taste buds and eating uh, for nutrition or to sustain life. Uh, two different uh, purposes there. Another thing that they do besides tasting good is looking good. Uh, if you were to you know, look at what's in a chicken nugget, just the raw ingredients, it'd be pretty scary. Um, whereas you know, when you see the end product with all the chemicals in there, the stabilizers and all of that kind of thing, it actually looks very presentable. And because of the, the extra scent that they add to it, it smells good as well. Uh, I'm going to go into that in further detail. Another thing uh, that they do is texture, make the texture good so it tastes good on the tongue. You know, if something were like jello, it might make you kind of nauseous when you were eating it. Uh, and that's the case with uh, a lot of these hamburgers that are in fast food restaurants. They've got a lot of fat in there. Uh, their fat, fat content's very high, and it might be like jello uh, unless they added some things in there that, that stabilized it and made it uh, palatable or edible in the first place. So there's, those are lots of different reasons why they exist. Another thing that uh, they put food additives in for is to increase shelf life. That's why you can take a Twinkie, take it out of the wrapper, put it there on the shelf. Ah, it's still the same after a month. And there's even an internet video, you can Google it, where a guy uh, put like a Big Mac in his pocket and then uh, four years later realized, you know, he got the coat out and it was in his pocket, he pulled it out. It was the same burger. Uh, and then he, he got a whole bunch of different ones over several years and he has them on his thing. It's very interesting anyway. Um, but today I'm actually going to go over uh, the different, uh, three different food additives that uh, are not the best for you. And uh, I'm going to go through them and tell you why and what substances they're in and, and ultimately how you can find out more about this subject. One of the more well-known uh, food additives is sodium nitrate. Um, what it's used for uh, is to make the color better, to make the flavor better, and to make the shelf life longer. Uh, it's in processed meats and cheese mostly, uh, bologna, hot dogs, uh, things of this nature. Uh, and it'll, it'll actually say it on the package. It's in bacon as well. Uh, you can certainly get versions of these foods without sodium nitrate in there. Um, but the majority of them in the conventional you know, method is to put sodium nitrate. And one of the reasons why it's not good for you and one of the effects that it has on you 
is that it actually converts the hemoglobin in your blood uh, and changes it to a different substance that can't carry oxygen. Uh, it's dangerous and in fact in large amounts can kill you and can actually create a disease condition. Uh, so the moral of that story is don't eat some bologna and then go exercise. Another uh, additive which isn't great for you is a Supatame K. Uh, it's used mostly in diet soft drinks. Um, it's used uh, as an actual artificial sweetener. It's bitter on its own so you don't see it on the store shelves like sucralose or stevia or some of the other things um, because it just is kind of bitter. But when you take that bitter sweet and you add some of the other types of sweeteners you can get a cocktail that tastes pretty close to sugar. The problem with the Sufitame K is that it really uh, overworks the thyroid gland and it's been shown to cause fatigue uh, when taken uh, over a long period of time. So you could literally be drinking that diet soda thinking you're giving yourself energy with the caffeine uh, and then over time find your uh, fatigue gets worse and worse so you could actually end up needing more and more. So it's kind of an insidious additive more than just you know you take it and it harms you right then. It, it harms you more over a long period of time. So the next food additive I'm going to go over today is Carinogen. Uh, this is in a lot of different stuff folks. Uh, it's used as a gel, an emulsifier, uh, and also a texturizer. Uh, some of the things that it's included in I'm going to read off because the list is so long. Uh, infant formula, cream, French dressing, head cheese, jelly, cottage cheese, ice cream, ice milk, evaporated milk, the list goes on. Basically look at the label and see if it says it's in there. Uh, it's bad for you for several different reasons, one of which is it causes ulcers in your large intestine, which of course can lead to blood in the stool uh, or even mucus in the stool. Uh, but the most insidious and the, the one that just is like why is it stunts growth. So why put it in infant formula? So anyway, stay away from it and if it's in infant formula that you're feeding your kids, certainly don't feed them that infant formula. You know, and uh, look at these different additives and find them on the label and uh, just don't eat them. So to wrap it up, you might be asking yourself, well, what do I eat? Um, the answer to that is on the outside of the store, basically. Uh, your produce section, uh, fruits, vegetables that are fresh, uh, organic meats. Um, there are some uh, organic food stores or health food stores that have uncured deli meats. I would stick with those versus the ones that you know have the nitrates and all the food additives we just talked about in them. All right. So I'm going to bid you adieu, uh, but I wanted you to leave feedback with any questions you might have, uh, rate the video please, uh, as well as subscribe to this channel. Uh, we're working hard on giving you a lot of really good information uh, and having you subscribed really helps. Uh, also I wanted to invite you to come to my website, nutritionaustin.com. I do different lectures and um, I'm not sure what my next one is, but my website will tell you.